Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon everyone and very good morning for our honorable lecturer Dr. Thomas Kohol, college and students from West Bohemia University. How are you Dr. Thomas? Assalamualaikum, good morning, good afternoon. Hello Seni, I'm fine, thank you and I'm looking forward to the session. Oh, thank you very much. Waalaikumsalam. It's nice to see you again, Dr. Thomas. So thank you again for your kind willingness to share your knowledge with us. And first yeah. of all, first of all, let us thanks to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his blessing, we are able to join in this valuable occasion. So before we start, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Seni, and it's my most pleasure to serve as your moderator today. So, ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present the Unicom Light Series 1. Light is stand for Lecture in Global Insight. This monthly event is conducted as one of our real steps to contribute in the global world and toward Unicom as the world-class university. So the topic today is about cooperation of designer and engineers, best practice and case studies. And considering the topic is very interesting and super important to enrich your insights. So let's pay our best attention on the lectures. So before we go to the main agenda, I would like to read the curriculum vitae of Dr. Thomas. Dr. Thomas Kohol loves projects and interdisciplinary teamwork. His interest brought him to the interdisciplinary cooperation in several international projects. He is independent journalist, lecturer, researcher, and head of interdisciplinary cooperation at Ladislav Sutnar Faculty of Design and Art, University of West Bohemia in Pilsen, Czech Republic. He helps to connect the world of business and creativity and brings orders and practical tasks among students so that they can work on them and build their portfolios. He was educated at the West Bohemia University in Pilsen and at Jan Amos Comenius University in Praha. In his doctoral thesis, he focused on the development of competencies of basic skills tutors with regard to better employment of people with low literacy, numeracy, and IT in the labor market. In his research and lecturer activities, he is focusing and exploring innovative ways of cooperation, problem solving, and creativity using his journalistic experience. So without any further ado, let's start our lectures. Please, Dr. Thomas, the screen is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Seni, for a nice introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, today we will talk about cooperation. Please share, Dr. Thomas. Yeah, I know. I will share my presentation a little bit later. So we will talk to, uh, today about uh, cooperation, especially about cooperation between designers and world of engineers, which is really important for us, for our future, for our universities. And uh, I hope that I can share with uh, you and with you, ladies and gentlemen, really nice examples uh, of best practices. And also the idea that we can think about it and uh, it will be uh, discussed it, uh, after the uh, first uh, 20, 30 minutes. So we can start right now. And uh, I will share the screen.
So I hope it's visible right now. Yes, it's clear, Dr. Thomas. Thank you very much. So on this first picture, you can see the faculty of Vladislav Sutnar Design and Art, which is part of University of West Bohemia. And uh, in the beginning, uh, I have uh, one story, short story for you. Just try to um, imagine this nice word, we can say disconnect word. This is about the four people, maybe four friends who are working close together, who are uh, maybe close to each other, but they have uh, their own environment. They have own computers, they have own offices, but there is no connection between them. So they have own silos. They are really independent and they can't go for a lunch together. They have no opportunity to be together because between there is a big distance. Another example is about uh, twins. There are similar one to one. Uh, they can't to get success. They can't to cooperate together because they are on different ways. So I think that uh, we can stop this disconnected world. And it's better to think about the world of cooperation because this idea is important for us, for our study and for our teamwork. So we can imagine that for all of us is better to be close together, to share our ideas together, to have opportunity to solve the problems together, uh, to exchange uh, information and have a nice uh, environment around us and feeling good. So this was for introduction. And I also prepare few important challenges that we can have in front of us for our future. First, global challenges is about the 464 billion dollar and this huge amount is from space economy space industry because this value of the space economy was in two last year 200 2022 and it's really interesting information that this space economy increased from the year 2010 about 70%. And can you try to imagine that in space economy, engineers and designers don't work together? It's really impossible because it's about a lot of inventions, it's about testing materials, it's about machinery engineering, it's about um, human and how to save human body in the space. So this is one uh, big challenge, big opportunity that we can focus on and try to imagine the cooperation. Another challenge uh, can start with this number, which is 60%. And it takes, we can talk about that uh, the population of the world will be live in the urban areas until 225. So after two years, we can expect that more than half of people in our planet will live in urban areas and what we need uh, for them. I think that uh, uh, only one thing we can talk and think, and uh, it is that we need to prepare smart city. And I chose the smart city as an excellent type of cooperation because we can collect a lots of cooperation from different fields and from different fields of engineering 
and also from different fields of designers. So just try to imagine smart manufacturing, try to imagine smart farming, agriculturing, or smart health equipment. That's interesting. What about uh, new transport uh, ideas and inventions? So smart transporting with uh, electricity, with uh, another important things that uh, we need to have in our future cities. So this picture is a real future. And I'm really happy that uh, the city of Pilsen, where I've been living in the Czech Republic and where my university is also, is preparing to be a smart city uh, during next uh, few years. And uh, our university and team of engineers and also designers have opportunity to work with uh, the government of the city for the preparation of our smart city in our uh, near future. So ladies and gentlemen, when we are talking about the cooperation between different fields, we need to uh, think about the process because it's really important. So we will introduce the process of cooperation. We connecting with new industries, but we need to have new technology. We need to have competences, how to work together, how to work with the new technology and uh, with new uh, computers, programs, machines, or how we can uh, listen customers' needs, and uh, we need to cooperate together because without cooperation, there is no invention. And during this process, we can go to the innovation to get new innovation for all industries, factories, or civil service. So uh, this is the process that we need to respect. So I think that uh, only cooperation and effective cooperation is our way because it can bring new ideas. It can help to us because teamwork can solve the problems uh, easily and quickly. It's really supportive for the people who are organizing in the teams and it's also beneficial for the teams. And uh, the teamwork can bring us uh, the new learning opportunities because we can uh, study and taking new information from different fields uh, and we are cooperating together. And also uh, the cooperation can bring a new relationship and strongest uh, partnership between us and uh, from my point of view and from my experience, it's always about uh, better trust. So when we know each other better, it's better, uh, it's better our cooperation and we can reach easily the results because we know each other, we know our expectation, and we know our skills and uh, our work is also about uh, better fun and better friendship. So in the new uh, next few slides, I can give you a uh, few examples of uh, the excellent cooperation between designers and uh, different uh, fields of engineers. On this picture, you can see the idea about uh, our new faculty building. And it's, uh, I think it's good example because uh, you can see that uh, the designers can work with the architecture and also with the buildings engineers because uh, the buildings for our future needs to be green, need to be safety, need to have nice environment, uh, need to be uh, safety by energy, water, and uh, the sun and uh, the temperature. And also it has to be 
excellent environment for working life because uh, I think that uh, all of us know that we are spending more hours in our work than in our homes. So the working environment is very important. So I believe that cooperation with designers who are uh, who can prepare, for example, the interiors or details of the architecture can help to have better feeling uh, in uh, our working areas. Another example is uh, about the project that we had uh, that we finished with uh, our designers team in the end of 2019. The topic was uh, uh, the new design of caravans. And um, uh, we had uh, the customer. The customer was the one of the Chinese company close to the capital city, Beijing. And uh, the company is uh, one of the third uh, biggest producer of the caravans in China. And they asked us if we can uh, prepare a new, new design solution for them. So we say, yes, why not? Uh, but uh, what was the process? Uh, try to imagine situation that designers will prepare excellent and very nice, very beautiful solution for the company, but the company is not ready uh, for uh, this uh, excellent uh, changings because uh, they need to also invest a lot of money to the manufacturing process. And I don't think so that uh, this is the right way of uh, designers work because it must be really close to the user needs, to the company's uh, partnership, and uh, it means that uh, our team had to move to China in the beginning of the year 2019. We, need, uh, we needed to visit uh, our partners. Uh, we need to, needed to see the company process of manufacturing and uh, the designers were prepared the solution that uh, push a few steps forward, the company, uh, with uh, the um, with the, the investment that was suited to their needs and to their solution and to the market. So uh, the design solution was like this, and uh, move the company few steps forward, and uh, we prepared the design with cooperation of engineers knowledge that uh, they moved uh, better the company on the Chinese market with uh, caravans. Now look at, at uh, this picture. Uh, one and a half months ago when I uh, visited Unicom uh, and uh, I was in a conference EcoBest, I present uh, uh, the first small picture uh, with the prosthetic hands. Uh, it was the project uh, that you can see on the uh, left uh, corner. And it was about the prosthetic hands. We had project for one and a half year. We had a team uh, with uh, healthcare experts, engineers for 3D printings, uh, we had experts for uh, mechatronics engineering, uh, also designers. And we prepared with cooperation uh, with uh, world famous company Autobock, uh, the prosthetic uh, uh, for the patient, which uh, was made by uh, 3D printing, which is uh, the type of innovation process. And if, uh, we finished this project in the end of uh, last year, but uh, this year with all cooperation, we, we started new project, which is on the bigger picture. You can see the guy, the man in, uh, in the fitness center. Uh, uh, he's uh, always a member of the Autobook company, but he's also the patient and he is working with special prosthesis which is using for fitness 
So the company asked us if we can uh, uh, cooperate with uh, with in the team with engineers and designers and prepare new solution for uh, people who are who have prosthesis but who want to work and live um, actively. Uh, for example, in a fitness center. So we are working now uh, during this year on the project that is uh, following the project from the past and uh, following also new trends of the people who are uh, handicapped. Another uh, type of cooperation. Uh, this is uh, the project that we had or we ha are having still with our partners from uh, Kuala Lumpur with uh, Taylor's University. Our students teams uh, invented uh, the safety box, kata box, that is for the children and we can uh, save them against the floods. And uh, we are trying right now to finding um, the partners, uh, especially for uh, building the prototypes in Malaysia. So we are cooperating with our embassies and uh, another partnership. But uh, interesting things that I would like to present today is that uh, three weeks ago, uh, I brought this project to the new group of engineers, and they were engineers from marketing. It was the group of German students or partners. They visited uh, my faculty three weeks ago, and they were so interested in this project of Catabox. So they prepared the economic and marketing solution for our project. It took them. Um, 16 hours, they work hard two days together. And after that, they prepare for us very nice solution that can uh, help us to be uh, better when we can introduce our idea. So this example is that we had the project of designers and engineers, and then we moved the idea to the economist uh, experts uh, we involve another university and other students to join the project. They were economist engineers and they helped us with the solution about management, marketing of life cycle of this nice Kata box product. So this is the really nice example of uh, international cooperation as well, not just uh, the cooperation between different study fields. So we can summarize how we work in uh, our faculty and in our projects and in our university. We usually are building interdisciplinary team with uh, the economists, experts, engineers, designers, for example, health professionals, because a lot of projects we are oriented on this uh, area. And we are using design thinking methodology as a process of inspiration, empathy, ideation, prototyping, and testing. And uh, what we are focusing on, it's necessary to think about the users because uh, without uh, people who are using our new products or uh, who are using the results of our cooperation, it's nothing. It's, it can't be useful. So we are focusing on their needs. We are mapping uh, the situation of our partners, and it means also the company's partnership. Uh, we are trying to find and collect the information about uh, their needs and situation, and we are trying to communicate effectively with them, with our partners, planning our work, and also trying to removing the barriers because there are lots of barriers when you are building uh, the team uh, with the people from different experts area. And uh, 
On the other side, uh, there is the idea that uh, it's necessary to support the students and our teams uh, with, the, with the skills, how to effectively cooperate together, how to build effective teamwork. So uh, we opened it uh, two years ago, uh, the skills workshop. On these uh, slides, you can see the partners university <clears throat> who are working together. There is also Unicom uh, University <clears throat> on this map and uh, the, the skills workshop, the skills development is focused on personal vision of students, of uh, the members. We are mapping their skills, trying to develop their own power, their own skills. After that, we are uh, working in small teams, small groups and building team power, good team feeling and try to find a creative solution for problem solving because we are simulating the, the real process when the students will graduate and work uh, uh, in, in companies uh, uh, or they will apply the, the the job on the on the job market and uh, the the last thing is also uh, the presentation skills so in the middle of this map you can find the problem and the students and we have the the way how we can develop their their, their skills the teamwork can be online offline it depends of the situation uh, and also it depends of the financing system so there is no barriers, uh, uh, the distance is not uh, in barriers. And uh, we are also collecting information uh, about uh, the experience, how the students feel uh, when they are working together. So uh, this is the, for example, the mix of experience of engineers. Uh, this is the mix of experience of designers, the students from faculty of healthcare studies, and so on and they are usually uh, really exciting because they have opportunity to speak uh, uh, to they have time to speak they have time to think about themselves they uh, have time to introduce their idea they have listeners and they need to when they are working in the team uh, during the, the skills workshop they have opportunity to discuss their idea and to find the team solution together. So it's also about the exciting, finding new, new ways of their thinking, finding uh, new partners, friends, because uh, it's good to, to use your friendship from the, from the user, university time study uh, when you are older, because uh, uh, you, you have the connection and uh, it, it's good to use your old friendship for new situation. Well, uh, in the beginning of this uh, lecture, we talk about supporting our uh, new industries and about the process of cooperation. So I can summarize. When we are talking about industry, we need to think about new technologies and we need to uh, have uh, new knowledge, new competencies uh, to be, we need to be open to cooperation because without this uh, uh, equipment, we can't to get innovation. And the innovation process is something, what is our goal for our future? And uh, also in the beginning, I introduced the smart city as an example of excellent cooperation process. So we can look at it again because there are a lot of topics. It can be our example that we can combine many different uh, study fields together and the results are useful for society. So in the end of my uh, lecture, I have the question for the audience. The question is, what can be the barriers to successful cooperation? Now you can use the QR code to connect uh, the questionnaire or you can use 
the link from uh, Mentimeter, the link was also sent to uh, to Chatbox. And I will wait a few seconds and then we will see your answers. And I will be really happy that you will support us because it's also the bridge how we can open our discussion uh, part of our session. Well, I will change the screen. And we have first answers here. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your cooperation. And I can see that we have uh, more than 300 participants. So it's very nice. And I hope that our discussion will be interesting because uh, the first part was like motivation part. Uh, I opened uh, the topics, uh, but uh, I couldn't uh, explain also the details. So we will have time for uh, deeper communication and discussion uh, in next few minutes. So, maybe we can uh, open uh, the results uh, when we uh, will start the discussion. So I will just finish my uh, presentation. It's really, it's really short. So I hope that I inspired you that it was uh, 20 minutes inspiration of uh, good examples of the practice. And uh, I would like to finish uh, uh, this, this introduction lecture with the idea that we need to be open for the cooperation because this is only way that uh, we can go to our future. It's not always easy. Uh, we need to uh, crossing our comfort zone many times, but uh, I think uh, it's good to do it. So please be open. Uh, be open also with your questions uh, uh, on this session. Uh, you can be in touch with me by LinkedIn. This QR code is the the, uh, the connection to my LinkedIn profile, or you can find me on WhatsApp. So uh, it's an uh, opportunity how we can cooperate uh, together in the future or discuss interesting topics I'll be happy that I will be in touch with you. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Thomas, for such an interesting lectures. So now we are come to the question and answer session. So you can drop your question in the chat box or you can directly talk by pushing raise hand button. Please don't forget to mention or write your name department and university. So uh, everyone, we will respond to the two questions first. And after that, we will open the next question session. Please, uh, everyone, pl please feel free to ask any question. And while uh, we are, oh, okay. We have one uh, student ask, uh, uh, please hold it. Please uh, hold it. Um, hello. 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 Yes, we can um, hear okay. you. Okay. Um, so I'm Khalid, studying at 
Unicom. I'm taking the management major. So I wanted to ask is, I'm a bit curious about the prosthetic arm that you made. Um, how did you first thought about making the idea of making the prosthetic arm? And how did you try to promote the prosthetic arm since not all people got uh, got an arm loss? And how did you make it into the market? Okay. Uh, thank you for the question. So, Dr. Thomas, would you kindly to answer the question directly? Yes, uh, I can answer. Thank you, Colette, for, for this nice question. Uh, the, uh, the first part of the question was uh, how we will find, the, how we will, uh, how we form the idea. Uh, that's easy. Uh, I'm in, in a team with uh, uh, different people from the different study fields and uh, different faculties. Uh, so uh, we, we had a meeting uh, two years ago and uh, we, we talk about uh, the possibility topics of oral cooperation and uh, one colleague who is expert for um, uh, physiotherapy and uh, ergotherapy and also uh, teach students from uh, uh, prosthetic uh, fields found that uh, it can be interesting uh, to uh, work on this idea and especially with the focus of 3D printings of this arm because this is the innovation process. Now, uh, during uh, this days you come to find uh, prothesis uh, that are making by 3d printings they are still uh, uh, making by um, um, lamination process uh, hand manufacturing in prothesis uh, offices or laboratories so uh, it was the innovation idea and uh, uh, the the prosthesis companies are trying to do this, uh, and we had an idea to be in this first line uh, of the teams who are uh, trying to do it, and it was successful. That was interesting. That uh, the when we tested uh, the the prosthesis, it was successful because the the solution of of the materials and construction was uh, very similar as a traditional process of manufacturing. But there are a lot of health barriers uh, that we can uh, uh, put this uh, solution on the market. We are now uh, trying uh, uh, to find the partners because it uh, usually has to be the companies who are working uh, and producing this uh, this prosthesis. So we have knowledge. We would like to transfer the knowledge. Thank you. Uh, so, Holid, are you are you listening, Holid? Are you satisfied? Or any question? Any more question for Holid? Okay. So, Doctor Thomas, while we are waiting the next question, so. Uh, you have so many uh, uh, collaboration experience, right? So uh, actually, I would like to know your most memorable experience in interdisciplinary practice. So can you share with us your most memorable experience? Um, thank you. That's uh, interesting questions. I think that... Uh, it will be good that uh, I will not um, saying the type of project uh, because the, the the main important thing for me uh, was a few years ago that uh, people are uh, they, they they have they are interested in cooperating together. That's that's the, uh, the the idea that I found. That was great, and it's it was like uh, about the power that you can uh, you can now have in in the team 
And uh, uh, th this type of feeling uh, was so important for me. And uh, from that time, I know that uh, the international cooperation and the cooperation across the, the fields of expertizing uh, can be realized uh, by, by me, by my colleagues. Uh, we, we can build our collaboration family. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, everyone, if you have any questions, you can drop your question in the chat box. Uh, and also you can directly talk by pushing raise hand button. And please don't forget to mention or write your name, department and university. And the next question is come from Farizki, student from Unicom. Uh, he said, uh, good morning. Dr. Thomas, I have a question about prototyping and time frame and project that you already done. Example, the prosthetic arm. How long does it take to make one prototype and how do you divide the time to construct and market the project itself? Okay, uh, I can explain easily. The beginning was difficult. Uh, in the beginning, we had uh, uh, the people from uh, different uh, expertising sectors, and they didn't uh, understand to each other uh, how, how the process of manufacturing prosthetics is, is working in life. So uh, we spent uh, quite a lot of time uh, with, uh, with the meetings. We visited the laboratories uh, in, a, in a Czech Republic and in Germany because it was the project with our German uh, university uh, partners as well. And <clears throat> we spent maybe six months uh, uh, to opening the ideas and, and the topics. And after that, uh, it uh, was uh, easier because the team uh, suddenly uh, had a uh, deeper view to the other fields and uh, the people understood to each other and uh, they had still different point of view on, on the problem uh, and on the topic, but they were closer. And I can uh, compare it uh, when uh, I present the picture with two different protheses. Uh, when, we, uh, uh, when we had the first meeting for new prosthesis project, uh, it was already the same team. And uh, on the first meeting, it was really clear that we don't have to spend the time to explain the problem because we have team and people who have knowledge and everything is easier. So it was the, the connection that I said that uh, uh, the cooperation is also about uh, the friendship and better understanding to each other. So uh, uh, now everything is easier. And the second part of the question was also about the process. Uh, the 3D, 3D printing process is quite easy. Uh, our colleagues spent a lot of time with working uh, and preparation the data because they had to scan uh, the arm uh, uh, of the patient and they had to modulate uh, in the software, but the printing was quite quick. Thank you very much for the answer, Dr. Thomas. And Mr. Yuda, please. You can open your cam and directly ask to Dr. Thomas. Your microphone is still off. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Sir Thomas. Uh, it is a pleasure to meet you again because I was participate in your uh, workshop. Uh, a few times before and uh, I want to ask something about this kind of discussions and my question is how can we designing a wonderful teamwork that produce a design that compatible with society nowadays 
but don't forget about the environmental problems problems because uh science nowadays some problems are come from environmental aspect right and i want to ask about how can we design a product that compatible with the society right now but not uh against the environmental problems thank you thank you sir okay it's uh, thank you very much uh, it's nice to see you again yeah i remember you very well oh yeah thank you sir. uh your your question is not uh, easy uh, i can divide it into the two parts first part how we can um how we can organize the environment for successful teamwork um especially at uh, the university it's it's not easy uh, because uh, usually we need to organize the schedule of the subjects or uh, classes that we will prepare the time that the students have opportunity to to meet to be together and it's not easy uh, uh, but uh, it's uh, uh, it's working when when you are doing this uh, it helps a lot because mm -hmm. the the students have a time to work together during their classes or their their study at school second part of the question was uh, how we can prepare the innovation product uh, uh, which has uh, connection with uh, society and it's uh, also yeah. uh friendly to environment uh sometimes i think that we can bring the idea from from our homes or from our private uh, lives to our schools or to our work because uh we are part of the society all the time very no, car we can't we, we we can't to di divide our lives into the uh, separate parts of day yeah we are still we are still people who are who are uh, your answer it's wake up in the morning and discuss about this and help you out okay hello yeah, yeah. and go uh, and go 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 please sleep please in the evening so so yes so please can, continue okay so we we we, we, we need to bring the ideas and topics from our global lives and um, also then we we need to think uh, what kind of solution is safety for our uh, environment and for the nature how we can uh, prepare better solution for for our life in our planet and sometimes uh, it can be, it, it's not cheap. Maybe the, the products will cost more and we uh, we will use it uh, them a longer time. I think the, the mobile phones are a good example. Uh, probably, you know, the people who are changing their mobile phone each year, maybe quicker. But uh, the question is if it is necessary. We will see. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Yuda. Uh, so uh, while we are waiting the ne next question, I have a question yeah, actually from the students. Um, uh, he, he is my staff in uh, the directorate. So he asked me that, uh, please uh, ask Dr. Thomas that I would like to know how we as university students initiate an interdisciplinary practice with other fields what are the things or materials or crucial information that we should prepare, Dr. Thomas? Okay, I think that uh, the, the teachers and professors uh, need to help to, to the students in the beginning and uh, open uh, uh, the environment at the school for uh, this cooperation. So they need to uh, build the first bridge and uh, help uh, to the students to be together and work together. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. And uh, another question 
is uh, uh, Maura asked uh, that I would like to know how do we should react or come into terms if we find that our interdisciplinary group is not quite cooperative, sir, with each other. So we find that the most answer of the students is ego, ego is one of the barriers of the cooperation. So in related to that, so they would like to know how is, uh, how if the our group is not quite cooperative, what should, yeah. So <laughs> the e ego, ego can be problem, but uh, yes. uh, right. how to, how to answer quickly, um yeah it's it's always good to try to be more enthusiastic or have uh, more empathy to to each other so it's about the listening uh the, to other people about the listening their their story their life story about the listening their ideas and needs and the solution Sometimes uh, must be the decision of the team, but sometimes uh, uh, you need to have stronger leader, uh, but who is familiar, not not angry boss, but familiar with with the people with the team because it can be good experience for them. Okay, thank you, Dr. Thomas. And uh, another question is come from Hassan Safa. He said, I want to ask what method for sure is our patient in the creative field because sometimes I doubt my skills, he said. As I think it's a common uh, feeling, Dr. Thomas, when we doubt our uh, self uh, uh, skills, yeah, Dr. Thomas, okay. and how to overcome that. So it means uh, the question is about how I can trust by myself. Trust yeah. my skills. What method is our patient what? for sure? Is okay. our patient in the creative field? What method? Oh. Because sometimes oh. we feel uh, uh, uncomfortable or doubt ourselves. Uh, this is the only way uh, how how you can uh, cross the, uh, the the borders. We need to cross all comfort zone and try to that we have power and skills to do it. Because uh, without uh, without uh, trying this, uh, it's difficult to have uh, the experience. So it's about uh, that we need to collect experience. Sometimes it will be wrong. It, it will doesn't work, but it's okay. Uh, if we will try it, uh, uh, we will see that uh, we are better and better and our uh, intern power will be uh, more stronger and we will trust to, to, to ourselves better and uh, feel more comfortable. So for example, um, for me, it's always a challenge uh, to, to uh, be with, uh, with uh, the people with stronger knowledge and try to try to catch uh, what is important in their, in their fields of expertise and how we can uh, work together with without uh, power on, on, the, on, on the borders. So uh, we need to destroy the borders, but we need to try it. Okay, so we need to try it anyway, Dr. Thomas, right? Yeah. Yeah, we need, we need to be from the comfort zone, right? Yeah, we, we need to open ourselves and uh, saying to our uh, friends or uh, people from, from our school that we are ready and we want to uh, cooperate, but sometimes we feel that it's not so comfortable for us, but it's okay. After a few days, it will be better because we will uh, know that the, the other people feel maybe the same. Yes, thank you. So uh, next question is comes from Minda from Department of Management, Unicom. 
Hello, Mr. Thomas. I want to ask something about smart city project. As a citizen that live in developing country with crowded traffic, what is the best solution to pursue the society to start using public transportation? Okay, uh, that, that's a key topic uh, because uh, um, we need to divide it into two problems. One problem is that uh, the government of the city uh, have to build the friendly environment for new possibilities and new innovation. So they need to work on concept of the smart city and the company and the different teams will prepare the solution when they will see that the environment from the government is uh, ready or it's uh, moving in the process. And then the public transport uh, uh, costs uh, cost money. Uh, so the, the, the government of the cities needs to needs to collect the money for for uh, effective transport. But when they are building the public transport on a, on a good level, they will see that uh, the environment for the people who are living in the city is much more better because it's about uh, it's without the pollution, it's without the big traffic um, of the cars. Uh, people can using alternative uh, type of transport or using electric buses, trolley buses, uh, trains, um, it depends may maybe tube or metro uh, if the city is uh, big. But it's uh, th this is the future uh, to have a uh, uh, better environment in our city. Okay, thank you. So next question from LD Abdul Malik. He asked that which, which project that you think is the most challenging one? Uh, the question is uh, asking uh, the project that I had opportunity to be or the future projects. Uh, I think your project, your experience, which is the most challenging uh -huh. one? I think that the, the, the prothesis project was one of the uh the most challenging because uh we had uh people from five different uh sectors of expertise i didn't know uh most of them in the beginning and uh, also the the team was international so the language uh, skills were a little bit barrier between us so it was uh, the biggest challenge, and uh, I can say that uh, we, we made a really good friendship also with our German partners, and we will continue from from uh, from this September with new uh, three years project, and it was it will be focused on exoskeleton for rehabilitation process. So it will be another another challenge that I hope can share after one year or two years uh, because we will have uh, results uh, so it will be interesting but it was it wasn't easier uh, in the beginning okay uh, thank you uh, so uh, dr thomas when we cooperate with people from different fields so actually we find sometimes find ourselves very hard to reach a common ground, right? Do you agree with that? Sometimes we feel, we, we are feel very hard to reach uh, the common ground of the uh, cooperation. So maybe you have experience or do you have uh, some tips for us, especially for the students? How do you usually get out of such a situation when we very hard to find a common ground? Mm. I think um, it, we can we can say so. It's like uh, when you are uh, doing uh, the sport, you need to practice. You need to 
repeat uh, your uh, your everyday skills and you need to train it and uh, this is the uh, only way how we can move from the base ground to to the next level and uh, it's good when uh, when uh, when your university uh, is bringing uh, the opportunity to to have the program that you can uh, simulate uh, the process of teamwork and uh, as uh, we, for example we had the workshop at uh, unicom in the beginning of march with the students so it was one of experience for them and but uh, not just one time is not enough it it uh, must be um, more often in, in the process and uh, the students need to find that it's open for them and this is the opportunity because when they will train it they when they will trust themselves they will be better and the school also will have uh, better results and uh, evaluation so i think uh, this way is good okay thank you uh, and the next question oh uh, we have so many enthusiasm uh, participant dr thomas so many uh, yeah, questions very... yeah uh, so, uh, Dr. Thomas uh, from Aulia, yeah, from Department of Management Unicom, adding a question from LD: How do you tackle your most challenging project? Yeah, um, <clears throat> uh, I, I think that uh, uh, I, I spoke. About about it uh, a few minutes ago uh, you need to be a uh, bit uh, among the people around you uh, and uh, have time to speak with them then uh, it's time uh, how we can find new idea because it's about the discussion when you are just uh, in your office or at your home uh, it's not enough uh, so uh, it's necessary to have uh, people who are interested in uh, uh, the, the other people and other study fields. And uh, it's also uh, about it that you can't go so deeper in, in one, uh, one study field because you don't have a time. So you have the, the, the right experts who are understand to the details of expertise for example, physics or biomechanic or mechatronics. And uh, for the other hand, you have the people who are a little bit uh, uh, on, on just on the top and they they uh, don't understand to the details, but they know more people uh, with interesting idea. So uh, probably from this group of people, you can find the management of the teams. Okay, thank you. And the next question is uh, comes from um, Pinka, please. Hello. Hello, Mr. Thomas. Hello, Miss Emmy. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, I'm Pin Khan. I'm from Unico, majoring management. Uh, I'm very interested in this virtual meeting. Thank you for sharing. Uh, and I have a question. In the explanation of the smart city component, there is such a smart government structure, right? Uh, and how if the government part inside the component has a problem. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I understood to you to your question. So can you repeat it, please? Please repeat the question, Ms. Pinkan. <clears throat> I think 
you asked about the smart the, uh, government in smart city, right? Uh, right. Uh, yeah. In the explanation of the smart city component, uh, how if the government part inside has component, uh, the component have a problem or a trouble? Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> I understand right now. Um, but uh, I think that uh, it's also about the experience. You can't build uh, from uh, from the point of zero the smart city for one hundred percent. It's impossible. So usually the development of the city will move step by step, and they will uh, get uh, experience how to solve the the problems on the level where are they in the in the in the time of the process. So don't worry about uh, the, the problems with, uh, uh, with the smart technology because uh, the problems will solve uh, during the process and development of the city. I think it's still same if you imagine uh, the mobile phone, how it looked like uh, 15 years ago and uh, what kind of mobile phone alias uh, computer right uh, now we are having in, a, in our hands. The, the companies solve the problems, technical problems and the, the connection and, and user friendly uh, with the process. So it's about uh, invention and, uh, and uh, about the cooperation during the time. Don't worry about it or I'm not worried. Okay, Pinka, is it enough? Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, next question is from Helena Fauzia. So, hello, sir. I'm Helena studying at Unicom and I'm taking the management major. I want to ask, what if we work in cooperation of or an organization that most of its members work separately? Well, like the most important thing in cooperation or an organization organization is teamwork, right? But what should we do if there's no team working, no team working in the cooperation? So how, uh, Helena, want to ask you, how if uh, there is lack of team working in a group? Yeah, uh, Helena, you, you can try it to uh, to organize the teamwork if you feel that uh, it's uh, good and necessary for for the company. And you will see if it will work. Uh, it's excellent uh, type of starting cooperating. If uh, the people will not uh, be able to cooperate together, and uh, you you will feel that you would it's the way that you would like to go change the team change the company so uh, maybe helena should become an initiator right dr thomas yeah the yeah initiator first of all of the team yeah. working right yeah first okay. first of all uh, try try it and if uh, you will not found uh, responsive people for for this type of cooperation uh it's impossible to change the the situation in, in the company probably because if you are not the the leader of the company you can't to change it uh and uh, but you have opportunity to find uh, another one where the situation will be much more better Oh, okay, thank you. And the next question is uh, from Rizki Amara Saputri, also from the Department of Management. I want to ask if the next few years human resource will be replaced by robots or machines that are more sophisticated. What solution must be done so that we as humans can compete in facing increasingly sophisticated technology? It's a really interesting question about our future and uh, human management, uh, but we don't know it. Uh, I think that you can uh, found uh, a lots of interesting papers that uh, they 
predicted uh, the situation since uh, 2000, uh, since, since the, the year 2000. And uh, uh, we still don't know how can uh, the, the robotic system change the, 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 uh, the jobs uh, or our jobs. So first of all, uh, you will find the information that, uh, for example, uh, we have uh, totally robotic companies, but uh, the robots are not alone inside. They need to have uh, cooperation with, uh, with the humans, with the people. So the people are controlling uh, if the, the robotic system is working uh, good. Uh, probably due with uh, with uh, the artificial intelligence, uh, we will uh, change uh, the jobs for uh, that that can repeat the the similar uh, uh, working activities. Uh, uh, usually, the, the experts are talking about um, uh, simply writing using uh, uh, the law rules or uh, the, the the fields that uh, uh, you can uh, recognize first needs of the users. For example, in in uh, in the hospitals. Uh, but uh, it uh, it was the the developing process was started, so uh, it can be stopped, I think so, and we will see uh, uh, how uh, how will be our future. But uh, there is one uh, very important thing that if you will be uh, creative and will use creative thinking. Uh, uh, it's the the part of life that uh, the robots and computers uh, can't to supply uh, the the humans. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. The next question is from uh, Ruben Siregar from English department. I want to ask something: How we can deal with the lazy person in cooperation? Because as I work together with my classmates who's lazy, I always fail to overcome them. Do you have another solution to overcome the laziness? The second question, I just curious and also wonder how about wonder about how much do you spend on your prototype artificial arm project? Uh... The, the the arm project uh, pro prosthesis project uh, it took uh, the last project took uh, eighteen months, but uh, I I or our team didn't spend one hundred percent times uh, uh, to this project. We we also have another project, so uh, it took eighteen months, but uh, we had only uh, opportunity to work few hours on this project per weeks but totally uh, time of project was uh, one and a half year uh, uh, the the answers about the laziness uh, it's it's good to try to motivate uh, your colleagues uh, to be more active uh, but sometimes uh, it doesn't work so it's good to have chance to find new partners because uh, i believe that the lazy people will found that they uh, they lost okay okay dr thomas thank you for the answer so we have we have uh, mr chapi nur akbar please mr chapi okay thank you miss seni and good day, Dr. Thomas. First of all, I think I would apologize that I cannot activate my camera because it is broken. I have checked earlier. So I would like to ask as a former university student, I am still curious and wonder, um, in your opinion, when we choose a leader in a group or being a leader himself, 
should we uh, prioritize choosing a leader who can distribute the work efficiently and effectively so it can so the project can be completed with great quality or should we prioritize a leader who brings the people together <laughs> maybe like that so thank you okay thank you for this interesting questions uh, i will prefer the combination uh to be leader is uh, very um it is the position that you you need to take care about the team and uh i'm not the type of leader who who is a stronger boss i'm a, a type of person who needs to be uh, who need to work with a good atmosphere in a team so for me it's more important to uh, be in a soft touch uh, uh, with my colleagues. Uh, but sometimes uh, uh, you will find that the, the, you need to uh, make a decision. So don't be afraid to, to uh, make decision, but uh, uh, it's usually good when you have uh, in your team cooperation atmosphere. So most of the decisions are uh, made by uh, all team and all all their opinions. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Thomas. And we have three last questions uh, from Chantika. Good afternoon, Mr. Thomas. I am Chantika Rezi Raflesia from Department Management Unicom. I want to ask, from the several design drawings that you described earlier, how do you convince the, that the public to be able to accept and understand the change in the project? Because at this time, there are still people who find it difficult to understand technological change and the times. Um. <clears throat> I think that uh, uh, the the university uh, um, environment is about uh, that the people are open to to new um, new solutions and new new changes that they can imagine that everything is uh, uh, in a development process. So uh, from my side, there is no problem uh, to be with people. Uh, who are not blocked about the changing. Uh, but uh, the experience from the companies and especially with uh, the small uh, companies is that uh, sometimes the people are uh, are afraid about the future. So they they are blocked and they are stuck on the, the position, uh, on the ideas, and uh, they don't want to accept any changes. But uh, it's difficult to help them. We can uh, we can talk with them, explain a lots of things, but but uh, I think that uh, we don't have so big power to to do this changing or change their opinion. So university uh, uh, universities are good for for new ideas. It, it's it's good uh to 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 work in the in the university environment and with the people from the universities they are so open okay uh, and then from brandon uh hello mr kohal i am brandon from management department i have a question for you what advice you suggest if we put in the situation where our patient quite contradict with our own ability. For example, like someone really passionate in studying computer network, but he or she really bad at it or not really skillful. But in the other hand, he or she quite good at accounting. So if you have a suggestion, rather we should focus on something we already can handle or just follow our patient regardless we shock at it. Okay, I think that question was uh, about how we can recognize the the skills in inside of uh, of the team. Yes, uh, it's uh, it's need to speak with the people and uh, try to find the the uh, that they will share that somebody is uh, good at the the management. Uh, the the others are 
good at uh, technical skills so they can solve the problems, but they need to be uh, more under the management process because they don't take care about the time. They don't take care about uh, the communication. They, they, they have skills to solve the, the technical problem. So uh, that's very important because it saves time uh for teamwork to know that you can distribute the task inside of the team to the right people because they have skills to do it so but uh, without the discussion you can you can't find it especially if uh, it is first time that you meet the the new people in your team okay thank you and uh, from isal uh, he asked, uh, my question is, have you ever experienced failure and how do you pick yourself? And uh, thank you very much, he said. Uh, yes, thank you for, for this question. Uh, sure, uh, I have also this negative uh, experience. Uh, uh, if I can say that it can be like... Um, 20% of uh, 100% uh, of my of my life uh, uh, sometimes i had a, 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 had a month that i knocked on the door of the other people like uh, imagine the, the situation that you are bringing new ideas but uh, that the people around you don't don't hear you uh so sometimes uh, uh and you you don't have opportunity to change their mind uh it can happen it happens to me it's uh, frustrating uh, uh, at this moment uh, uh you you can lose your own feeling but uh, you need to kick it out and uh, uh, next day you need to trust that your your idea and your direction is good and you will find the people who are on the same level with you. Oh, okay, so this is uh, will be our last question, Dr. Thomas. Yeah. Okay. Thank we you. are a little bit overwhelming here <laughs> with the enthusiasm of the participants. What a wonderful discussion, Dr. Thomas. And this is the last question due to our limit uh, time limitation. So from Faiza, I'm Faiza from Management Unicom. I have a question about AI linking material in this webinar. Since Henry Ford introduced the method of mass production and thus led the second industrial revolution, the world has changed a lot and continues to improve with the efforts of industrial engineers, but layoffs often due to the technology. And nowadays more and more technologies are being introduced to bring higher efficiency, 3D printing, AI, data mining, etc. Among all, AI is definitely the most threatening that most people think will take away their jobs. And can engineers be replaced by AI? Can engineers or maybe designers replaced by AI? I believe that not. Uh, maybe in a, some kind of uh, mechanical process or repeating work, uh, they can be replaced. Uh, but uh, if they will use uh, their creativity and to find a, a new solution, uh, they will not be changed. They will not be replaced. Creativity is the way how we can save our life uh, and cooperate uh, with uh, artificial intelligence because the, uh, the artificial intelligence is our invention. It's not invention by robots. In this in these days <laughs> yes I, I agree with you that human touch cannot be replaced right dr thomas yeah. okay uh, dr thomas unfortunately and everyone we have to end our uh, wonderful uh, discussion session due to our limited time but before closing i would like to give opportunities to dr thomas to give his piece of advice or encouraging all of you uh, for 
uh, be creative and innovative in digital era. Please, Dr. Thomas. Uh, thank you, uh, Seni, for 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 this kind for this really nice uh, session. I would like to first of all thank you uh, to the audience for very nice uh, questions, very nice discussion, and uh, and I would like to end uh, the session with idea that uh, it will be really good that we will be open-minded people because when we are open-minded uh, we can listen to each other and we can be close to each other and uh, i have this feeling from this session so thank you for your openness and i hope that we will have opportunity to be together again thank you very much so the tips and uh, the tips for all of you is to be open, guys. Yes, right, Dr. Yes. Thomas. So uh, please allow me to make some uh, little conclusion. So interdisciplinary cooperation plays a significant role in developing innovation because not only it can spring up and a new and novel idea, but a good interdisciplinary cooperation team is able to design the development plan more accurately from each other's technical perspective, thus improving the likelihood of successful project. And uh, once again, thank you, Dr. Thomas. And thank you, everyone. Uh, hopefully, the presentation and the material today will give benefit for all of us. Thank you for your kind attention. See you later on Unicom Light Series 2 and have a nice day. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. See you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.